since the appearance of the first art form and while it spawned into black and white to color formats. Looking at these have become very interesting. As we move into the 21st century and beyond with the changes in technology and tools, we must also learn that anime trolling I've seen is a big issue from viewing a person's comments to news article posts that a true anime fan must not accept their toxic views. I do believe that when CGI anime comes into play while people rant over it, the toxicity has gone too far and must be addressed while understanding that, in quotations, we really appreciate the amazing conversation we are all otaku and it's fun to geek out is introduced as offensive they go a mile us as anime fans and not otaku should be said more and more to bring all anime fans together while the term is not the only issue from anime fans working at news sites discussing anime or its viewers to the companies who make them and their creators going at each other. We must no longer troll each other about it. We who are involved in the anime community must treat anime that is good or bad for the reasons with respect and to keep our comments to ourselves to whom those fans apply and have yet to be anime fans while we wait for them to learn and grow with our boundaries established together. From hosts who stream anime watch parties to the fan bases who dispersed their toxic comments in form of trolling, we must ignore them while we give them a chance in forgiveness. While we usher in a new movement to crush and reject anime fans who troll and whatever form. To witness the sight of true anime fans to emerge in bravery in healthy conversations shall be entitled to become true anime fans who are open minded, who don't claim that one anime is best of all time, who don't troll about the anime because of its bad animation. People who wish to become anime fans must evolve maturely and be willing to watch anime without negativity to have fun, exciting interactions. Never be called an otaku. We are anime gamer fans. Good evening, fellow anime gamer fans. It's time for this week's podcast. Let's go! Well, I got the chance to watch Zume's door locking, and with the plan to watch it, I was really attracted to the creativity of the movie and how the protagonist overcame her issues of being kind to herself 
while dealing with supernatural creatures and chasing a white cat, which was a pillar from the other side of the world. Shizume and a mysterious character who locks doors and seals it with a key so that the other side does not cross into the other world. It almost felt like a Hayao Miyazaki movie. So I'm curious about who else was involved in the production of the animated film. For those who did not know or new to the product, there have been sales of knockoff brands of Gunpla for more than a decade. With the changes being made, let's go to where and when it happened, which caused packaging changes to the occasional notifications by Gundam Info's website back in 2014. In 2010, Bandai has been mentioned about taking on the piracy on two companies, including the company Hong Li. The plaintiff who makes the Gundam kit brands sued two Chinese companies in a legal case which was brought to the capital of Beijing with the company at the time which was called Bandai had already registered Gundam at the Chinese Copyright Office back in May 6th of 2008. While the China legal publicity article is no longer present, Bandai sued the two companies under legality. You can check out the article at the Ni Kyung blog page while it is still present. In 2014, Gundam Info created a special article on the pirated editions of model kits and how the legal system can enforce and place criminal punishment on pirateers. In 2023, with the activities of pirated kits showing up starting with a few Gundam kits popping up on Timu, which is a security concern to all customers online and Gundam buyers should avoid when shopping. Timu was spotted with two pirated kits of the Gundam Aerial from the latest Gundam 2 Core series anime, Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. Not only the Gundam Aerial was also pirated, but also the two mobile suits from Gundam Seed and Seed Destiny kits were also spotted at Timu, the Strike and the Freedom Gundam. Other familiar kits have shown up too, so please avoid Timu. Better yet, don't shop at Timu as, again, for your private information concerns and to support Bandai Namco products. It is recommended that any Gunpla builder avoids any pirated product and to avoid them even at online shops like Timu. While Bandai Namco will be taking another legal action against the shop like a billionaire e-commerce site. Remember to always buy kits with the Bandai logo and the Bandai Namco logo or any of the previous kits that can be found on Bai, your local hobby store, and with the premium Bandai sites within your local regions around the world. As long as you see the Bandai logo on the box, it is legit. Credit goes to the Open Toy, Niji Kyung Blogger Page, Gamer News 24, Gundam Guy, Gundam MY Blog, and Gundam Info. That's it for tonight. While there will be more content to premiere and to share with you while keeping you informed, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more future content, and join the Samurai Media Mainframe Global Discord server. Spread the joy and kindness, and have a nice night.